them up, man. I ain't got 750 to pay. It was something out in the woods and it tore him to pieces. And whatever it was, it was big and hairy. And I'm like, that's the Misha Toy at lunchtime. <laughs> that was him eating a sandwich. Which <laughs> But it was growling at me. It's like, no, dude, that's the way he talks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the f- is here. I think that Benicio del Toro is really, really, really miscast for this movie. Oh boy, is he miscast! But the reason why he was cast was, first of all, this was a passion project for his for the longest time because he looks like Lon Chaney, and Lon Chaney was always an inspiration for him. Lon for Chaney Jr. Yeah. Lon Chaney Jr. Rick Baker is pissed because he was promised that all these transformations were going to be practical. And Joe Johnson was like, yeah, that's nice and all, but I want to see if we can push the envelope on digital effects. And so much of what I saw was practical effects. There's tons of makeup. In yeah, this. there it is. Was, it was not that, all that CG. But when they're tra- changing, that's almost entirely CG. And that was something that... it looked that, great. It did look good. But... At the same time, I can't really criticize it for that because there were some cool gore effects in this hell, film. Hell, you know what? When it comes to the gore scenes, every death in this movie made me flinch. Yeah. I, I had to give it props on that. Benicio Del Toro plays an American actor who returns to England to mourn the death of his brother who was mauled to death by some mysterious creature around the countryside. And so when the, uh, Benicio Del Toro joins a bunch of villagers to go out and find this creature, he is attacked himself, miraculously survives, but... As we all know by this point, it was a werewolf that attacks him. And whenever you're bitten by a werewolf or scratched or anything, then you too are cursed to carry the mark of the beast. The movie's just been pushed so it's it's been pushed back so many times. You know, we're going back to the old fashioned wolf man where it's just like our extra hairy guy with you know with with big teeth. And it's just to me, he's doing like it does just doesn't scare me too much because he's doing things that are not wolf man like. You see him tackle that guy? Yes. Like he just ran like somebody don't don't be scared of him. Get him on a contract. Sign him to the NFL. Make him a de- <laughs> make him a de- defensive tackle. Man, they show him like carjacking people. You see him just you see him like he did co- no he did carjack somebody. <laughs> yeah, you stage coach jack, jacked him. Co- yeah, he coach jacked somebody. You see those hands come through that screen. Get up, give that coach, bitch. <laughs> you know, Grand next thing. Theft carriage. <laughs> They did bring in the creepy atmosphere. You know, we we have that fog ridden countryside. We have those his uh, Benicio del Toro's home, which uh, he is owned by his father in the movie. Anthony Hopkins is almost like a big scary castle. Although I have to say, if anything was badass in this movie, how badass was Hugo Weaving? I mean, the, I think the two strongest people in here are Anthony Hopkins and Hugo Weaving. A- Anthony Hopkins is strong because he he makes the most out of what he has. Yeah, yeah. But he just walked around like a little fat gremlin with a twinkle in his <laughs> eye. You know, he's just walking through the hallways, just grinning. He is delightfully creepy in this yeah. movie because you wonder what you, but there's a moment where you just want to stop and say, okay, all right, man, you know, what the f- are you laughing about, okay? <laughs> you know, the character who's in here the most, though, that we haven't even talked about yet, who's in almost every single scene, is the goddamn moon. Jesus Christ, <laughs> we get it already. Yeah. I oh, mean, every no, scene no. transition is the moon I just like how they they're in, in this geographical anomaly where they have a full moon like every three days I know, I know. <laughs> although it's good to see that Gollum is still getting work <laughs> looking kind of like a pretty boy but still that was a long way to that's go Gollum when he was younger <laughs> <laughs> Gollum in the high school years <laughs> after a very slow beginning I have to say the movie picked up and it was a really very slow beginning and I gotta tell you I just can't say enough how Benicio del Toro was miscast because he was putting me to sleep I'm not saying that he can't act because I think every Everybody here likes Benicio del Toro, but I really did have a lot of fun. And I got to tell you something: that just based on atmosphere alone, I think on DVD this is going to be the perfect Halloween film. A very low matinee, but a matinee. Uh, I agree with you. I give it a low matinee. I mean, the film is. It's very visceral, but that's all it kind of is. Uh, I've, I've found it really so entertaining when you know when it worked. Yeah, not not much character development, acting, eh, you know. And I give it a high matinee. I completely disagree with all of you. It is a solid matinee. Uh, I, it just it failed to connect with me emotionally. But when it was cool, it was really freaking cool. I'm like a little annoyed. It's like a oh, Victorian England. Great. You got what's the point of having Emily Blunt in this if she's not wearing something where you can see her cleavage? I'm just saying it would be different if it was like the Renaissance clothes where you had like the bustier see, where her, her boobs are falling. They out. needed to redate this thing. They should just have a scene where. Like the Wolfman is is attacking. He like finally reaches Emily Blunt. Anything he's gonna attack, he just motorboats him. <laughs> I hope he doesn't kill her though. I don't want I don't want to see him smoke a blunt. <laughs> Do not laugh at that. Don't encourage him. It was funny. Come on. Shut up. No. Time to make it-